Hi everyone, myself Dr. M. Lakshmi Prasad, working as an associate professor in the Department of Data Science in Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. So in this video, I'm going to discuss about what are the various principles of primary and then secondary data. So in previous videos, I discussed what are the primary data, what is the secondary data, and then how the what are the various uh, sources of uh, primary data and then secondary data that one is, uh, that we all discussed in previous video. Now in this video, I'm going to see about uh, what are the principles, what will have to be followed for primary and then secondary data. So. Let's see the introduction first. So data is nothing but a collection. Uh, data collection is a term that is going to be used to describe the process of preparing and then collecting data. So data collection is nothing but, so it should be a term that is going to be used to describe the process of preparing and collecting data. The systematic gathering of the data for a particular purpose from various sources that has been systematically observed, recorded and organized. So what is the data we are gathering or collecting? So that should be, uh, is to be organized in a systematic way. So in order to fulfill the various uh, uh, needs, so that should be done in the form of either through observation or through recorded one or how to be organized one. And data are the basic inputs to any decision making process in the business right so data collection is, is a term that is going to be used to describe the process of preparing and collecting data and then the data are the basic inputs to any data decision making process in the business and then what is the purpose of this data collection the purpose of data collection is, is to obtain information and to keep on record and to make decisions about important issues and then to pass the information on to others so these are the some other main purpose of, of uh, data collection so very first one is that uh, in order to obtain the information so the main purpose of data collection is to obtain the information and then to keep the, uh, to keep on record and to make decision about the important issues and to make information or to pass information to the others and then the classification of the data. So the classification of the data is to be divided into two types. So very first one is the primary data and the second one is the secondary data. So primary data and then secondary data. So the primary data, so the already you know that what is the primary data, the data which is collected from uh, field under the control on the supervision of an investigator is nothing but the primary data. So the primary data which are collected from the field under the control under uh, supervision of an investigator is nothing but the primary data. So the primary data means the original data so that has been collected specially for the purpose in mind. So the primary data is what we are going to be called as an original data. So that has to be collected specially for the purpose in mind. And this type of data can be generally uh, fresh and then collected for the first time. So it is useful uh, for the current studies as well as for the future studies also. For example, you were known questionnaire. So this is one of the example of the primary data. So this type of data generally going to be collected for the first time and it is all the time is going to be useful for the current studies as well as for the future studies also. So the primary research methods and techniques. So the primary research is going to be classified into two types like quantitative data and then qualitative data. So the quantitative data will again further divided into various phases like uh, surveys and then experiments again these experiments will be uh, further divided like uh, mechanical observation and simulation and similarly the qualitative data so we are you know, able to divide it into various sections like focus groups and then individual depth interviews and then human observation and case studies like this right so the quantity the primary research is going to be divided into categories. Very first one is that quantitative and second one is that qualitative. So the quantitative means where you can able to further divide it like some surveys, I can able to divide it as experiments. So if you are going to conduct the surveys where you can able to done through personal um, interviews or through mail or can you can able to do in-house or self-administered and then telephone, email, web like this. So these are the, some of the different types of surveys what we can able to get the quantitative data for a particular problem. Similarly, I can able to make use through experiments where I can able to done through mechanical observation or I can able to get the data through simulation also.
So these are the various phases of the uh, experiments of the quantitative data. Similarly, when it comes to the qualitative data, so the qualitative data means we have been able to focus to get the data from the focus groups or individual depth interviews and then human observation and then case studies. So like this, so I can able to get this the qualitative data. So what is the quantitative data and the qualitative data information? So the quantitative data means we can able to obtain the data based on the numbers, right? Uh, so example, 50% of this uh, 18 years old uh, drink alcohol at least four times a week. It does not tell why, when, how. So this should be the uh, quantitative data. So the quantitative data all the time can able to express in the form of uh, numbers only. And then the qualitative data means we can able to get the more details, uh, tells you why, when, and how. So like, like this. So the qualitative data can be able to get the more details. So all the time we can able to follow this type of questions like who, what, when, where, why, how, like this. So for, for this all types of the question and answer may come uh, for the quantitative data as well as the quantitative data. When it comes to uh, quantitative data, so this quantitative research is able to divide into different levels like right? numerical and statistically reliable and then the projectable to a broader population. So this is the purpose of this uh, quantitative research problem. So we have been able to done this uh, kind of data based on the numerical analysis and then statistical equations we have been able to do and then we can able to project it to a broader population also. Some of the sampling methods for the quantitative research categories will be random samples. So this is the one of the methods where we can able to perform on it. So where we can able to uh, implement equal chance of anyone being picked. So that should be the random sample. And then we may also select those not in target group or in discriminate. And then the sample sizes may also uh, may need to be uh, large to be represented to, and then they should be very express, expensive also. So assigning numbers, we are able to generate uh, uh, through uh, uh, random generate solutions. So see this picture. So these are the persons I want to assign some numbers for this one. So we are able to assign uh, generals by make use of this random generate and auto generate random selections. So by this method, I can able to generate the uh, sequence for this individuals. So there should be the random samples. This is one of the method that comes under the sampling method. So equal chance of anyone being picked. And next one is that stratified or segment random sampling. So we are able to samples is to be done on the base of representative segment here. So then it should be still random, but not. Uh, but more focus is going to be done here and maybe more relevant information and then may be more cost effective also. So where the population can be able to set some, some simple sample. So there should be the uh, stratified or segment random sampling. So this type of sampling may be able to uh, make uh, create the samples on the basis of a representative segment and then still it should be random and have to be followed but you should, uh, but more focus is going to be done here and then maybe more relevant information and then it should be more cost effective also. And next one is that quarter sampling here. The quarter sampling is not but again you have to then the sampling based on the segment and then it should be uh, not randomly selected here. So previous two will be randomly selected but this should be not a randomly selected one and then the specific number of each segment are going to be interviewed and then may not be fully representative and this method should be very cheaper one when compared to the uh, previous two methods what we are having so that is so the quarter sampling is again to be done based on the segment analysis and then the not randomly selected is to be done and then it should be uh, may not be fully representative and this method should be very cheaper one. And next one is that qualitative research. So qualitative research will be uh, in-depth and insight generating hard to be considered and not a uh, non-numerical one and then hard to focus on the directional one. So for that what we have normally performing the common techniques will be personal interviews and then depth of or one to one on one. 
or you can also implement the techniques like focus group you should be around 9, 8 to 12 and many groups of uh, 3 to 6 members so these are the, some of the common techniques what you can able to conduct so personal interviews so it should be in depth one or you can able to uh, conduct the personal interviews one on one among other and then all, all the other common techniques will be focus group which should be around of 8 to 12 members in size and then many groups which should be of the size 3 to 6 now some other methods what we have to be performed right so first one is observation method through personal uh, observation which should be observation method and personal interview so we can able to conduct this personal interview through the questionnaire and then the telephone interview that means you can able to perform through call outcomes and then call timings and mail push survey which should be done through mail uh, question so these are some of the methods what we can able to perform on this so observation methods so observation means where you can able to done through personal observation and personal interviews which should be conducted through questionnaire and then the telephone interview it should be conducted through call outcomes and then call timings and then mail questionnaire so mail survey is also one of that so it should be conducted through mail questionnaire and then next one is the secondary data so what is the secondary data so till now what i said should be the primary one right so what should be the primary so the data which is collected from the field under the control or under the supervision of single investigator is nothing but the primary data and this primary data is the original data that should be uh, collected specially for the purpose in mind and this type of data is going to be uh, generally collected for the first time uh, will be the primary data and this should be useful for the current studies as well as the purpose of the future studies also example your own questionnaire and this primary research will be uh, whatever the research we're taking that should be again divided into different categories like uh, qualitative and then quantitative data so the quantitative data and then qualitative data so if i take the quantitative data that should be collected through surveys is one of the method and then i can also conduct through the experiments suppose if i'm going to take the surveys and what we can able to perform the surveys on the so for that what we're having is personal interviews i can able to you know, do it or can I able to send the mails or in-house also i can able to do that and then the self-administrator and then through the telephone fax, mail and web. So like this I can able to conduct the service in order to extract the quantitative data. And similarly I can able to perform this through experimental studies. So that should be uh, done through a mechanical observation or I can able to done this mechanical through simulation also. Like this I can able to extract this to quantitative data. Similarly if I take the qualitative data, so this one you can able to extract it through uh, focus groups so, or can able to perform uh, individual depth interviews and then human observation or can able to be done through the case studies. So this quantitative data and then qualitative data. All the time the quantitative data is going to represent based on the numbers whereas the qualitative data is going to be uh, represented in detail on, in, in detail about the information and then tells you why, when and how type of questionnaires. So the quantitative research uh, label to do this uh, based on the numerical statistics, uh, numerical values and then statistical analysis and all. And some of the sampling methods what can able to extract the quantitative research will be random samples. So this should be one of the method where can able to apply it. So in this method we can able to have equal chance of anyone being picked is to be applied. And then the sample size may not be large to be representative, but this method should be a very expensive one. And then another kind of sampling technique what we're going to perform is stratified or segment uh, uh, random sampling here. So this one able to done on the basis of representative segment here and this one should be still and not random but we have to be uh, more focus is to be done in this method and then we should this method be able to give more relevant information and this method also should be the uh, more cost effective method and quant quota sampling is another kind of sampling where you can able to still perform based on the segment of the data and this one should not be not a random uh, one and then um, 
this method should be a cheaper one when compared to the previous two techniques. And then qualitative research, though this qualitative research can be implemented through in-depth or inside generating or non-numerical data will be considered as a qualitative data and then some directions will have to be followed for implement this. So normally you are going to perform some of the common techniques like uh, personal interviews where there should be depth in-depth interviews or one-on-one -on -one analysis and then I can able to implement the, based on the focus group it should be of around 8 to 12 number size and many groups of the size will be 3 to 6 like this and some other methods what we can able to perform here is observation methods so through this uh, uh, observation that should be done through personal observation and then personal interviews which can able to done through questionnaire and then the telephone interviews which can be done through call outcomes and call timings and mail surveys which can be done through mail questionnaire. So next one is the secondary data. So here the secondary data is going to be gathered and recorded by someone else uh, prior to uh, and for the purpose other than the current project will be the secondary data. Right. So the what are the data we are gathering that should be uh, collected and then recorded by some other else. Right. So prior to the purpose other than the current project will be secondary data. So the secondary data is the data that has been collected for the under purpose here. So it involves a less cost and less time and the less effect also. And the secondary data is the data that is going to be reused usually in a different context. For example, uh, data from the book. So the data what we are collecting from the book, book should be a secondary data example. Right. So the data whatever gathered or collected with some other people and then and then uh, prior to or for or for a purpose other than the current project. The data what have been collected for the under purpose should be secondary data. So through the secondary data what will happen that advantage should be very less cost and less time and effort. And the secondary data all the time is going to be reused uh, in different contexts if I am going to consider it and then example of the data from the book. And the sum of the order the internal sources of the secondary data. So the internal sources of the secondary data are usually for the purpose of marketing applications normally. So normally in order to predict the sales records and then marketing activity, cost information and then distributor reports and then feedback and customer feedback like this in order to get this kind of data from, from any marketing applications then you have to make use of the secondary data sources that should be that should be internal one right and then what are the external sources of the secondary data so the external sources of the secondary data for the financial application will be agendas books magazines newspapers, libraries, internet like this. So these are the some of the some of the external sources where I can able to extract the secondary data. From the genders I can able to get the secondary data and then for the books also I can able to extract the secondary data from the magazines and then newspapers what they publish daily in newspaper should be secondary data, libraries, internet and all. So these and all will be the external sources. Previous one should be the internal sources. So let's see the exam uh, differences between advantages and disadvantages of primary data. So what are the advantages is that targeted issues are going to be addressed and then data interpretation is better and efficient spending of information and agency of the data and then property um, proprietary issues and then which enable to address more specific research issues and greater control. So this and all will be the address of this advantages mm -hmm. of the primary data. Right? So advantage should be targeted issues are going to be addressed and the data implementation is going to be better if I'm going to consider the primary data and efficient spending for information. So what are the amount of time we are going to are going to collect the primary data that should be efficient one and dickens of the data and then uh, proprietary issues are going to be the advantages of this primary data and which can, can also be addressed the specific issues and have the greater control also. When it comes to disadvantages, the disadvantages of the primary data will be high cost and then time consuming process as well as inaccurate feedbacks and then 
more number of resources is required. Right, so the disadvantage should be high cost, and then what are the data collecting from spent timing for the primary data? It should be time consuming one, and then inaccurate feedbacks, and then more number of resources is going to be required. And then what are the advantages and disadvantages of the secondary data? So here the advantages should be easy of access. So since the data what we're getting from textbooks, newspapers, magazines like this, right? So that is the access will be very easy and low cost to acquire and then the class clarification or offer research questions is going to be done and then may answer the research question also. So what is the research question that should also be asked through the secondary data. So these are the advantages of the secondary data. So easy of access and low cost to acquire and then clarification of research questions and then may also be answered the research question. And the disadvantage should be the quality of research and not specific to the research needs and then incomplete information and not timely. So these are the disadvantages of the secondary data. So the quality of research will be uh, not that much great and then not specific to the researcher needs. So normally all the further researchers what we are going to conduct the research, mostly I am going to go for the primary data only not for the secondary data. And then the information what we are having should be the incomplete one and not, not timely also. These are the disadvantages of the secondary data. Right. So the secondary data, so the data which is going to be gathered or recorded by somebody else prior to the purpose other than the current project will be the secondary data and this secondary data what have been collected should be uh, for the under purpose only and then it involves a uh, very less cost time and then effort is uh, less when we are going to gather the secondary data. So the time will also be uh, less one and then the cost also be very less. The secondary data what we are going to be gathered is going to be reused also if I am going to consider the different texts or different concepts or different applications. So example from the data from the book here. And then the internal sources will be uh, for the secondary data will be uh, two types. The second, the first one is the internal sources and the second one is the external sources. So what are the internal sources? Suppose we are going to take the marketing application. So what are the internal sources of the secondary data? That should be sales, records, marketing activity and then cost information and then the uh, distributor reports and feedback and customer feedback. This and all will be the internal sources in order to acquire that uh, secondary data of any marketing applications. And then external sources. So the external sources of secondary data for a financial application, if I'm going to take it, is uh, genders. So genders means we have been able to get the relevant information of external sources, and then books, magazines, newspaper, libraries, and internet. Like this, we can able to get the uh, more external sources of secondary data. Then advantages of the primary data will be the targeted issues are going to be addressed and then the data interpretation is very good. So since so we are going to treat, uh, deal with the primary data and the information effic efficient uh, spending of our information, right? So whatever information are extracting from the application through primary data, so that should be a very efficient one and the decency of the data and proprietary issues and addresses the specific research issues and greater control. So these, these are all will be the advantages of the primary data here. When it comes to disadvantages of the primary data, the, the primary data disadvantage will be high cost. So the cost will be very high in order to acquire the primary data for any kind of uh, application. And then the time, time consuming also is more. And then the feedback will also be an accurate one and then more number of visits also going to be required in order to get the primary data. So, so previously it was uh, shown what are the various sources of the primary data and what are the examples of the primary data on the right. And then advantages for 
secondary data if I'm going to be considered, right? So the second data advantage should be easy of access is very first advantage of the secondary data and then the quality and then the cost if I'm going to be considered and the cost also very low in order to acquire the secondary data and then most of the research questions can also be clarified through the secondary data and then she may also be answered the research question through the secondary data and when it comes to disadvantages so the disadvantage should be quality of research so the quality of research will be uh, less when if i'm going to consider the secondary data and the not specific to the researcher needs so this type of secondary data is not so not supportable uh, in order to implement the research or conducting research and the incomplete information also be done and not timely is the disadvantages of the primary uh, secondary data and next one is the data collection flow we'll see now how the data is going to be collected and how the data collection flow will work so normally we're going to gather the data from multiple sources and the this data sources is going to be classified into two types like primary data source and secondary data source and this secondary data source again further divided into two categories like internal uh, sources and then external sources this internal sources will be uh, will be from the sales results or marketing activity or the cost information or distributor reports and feedbacks and customer feedback whereas the external sources will be the publisher data or it may be standardized source of marketing and then internet so these are the various external sources of the data suppose if i am going to take the publisher data so where will the published data will be in the form of electronic mode or it may be in the form of printed mode and have to be observed suppose if i am going to take the um, printed mode or electronic mode so normally many of the data is going to publish in electronic mode only like if i am going to be concerned some um, governments on then try uh, trade associations and then periodic uh, and then newspapers books annual reports and then private studies so these are the some of the various sources uh, of information what they get published either in electronic mode and then printed mode whereas when it comes to electronic services the standardized uh, the sources of marketing will be of the store audits and then warehouse withdrawal services and consumer purse purchase panels and single source of data and then Nielsen television index and then star stores and Bitron panels and multimedia services so like this i can able to get the data from of through standard source of the marketing so like this i can also extract this alternate sources from the internet so that should be the under the advantages where can i do able to get more of more of information through the internet but all, all this will be considered in the form of external sources right so the data collection so the data collection flow will be so normally the data are going to be gathered from multiple sources like we're having a primary data source and secondary data source so the primary data source uh, will be the single one so we can able to get that from a single individual person that should be the primary data source and then the secondary data source will be for the divided two categories like internal sources and then external sources so the internal sources means suppose if i'm going to take any applications so normally i can able to get internal sources will be uh, sales uh, results and then marketing activity and then the cost information and then distributor reports and the feedback and customer feedback so like this i can able to extract the internal source data of your particular applications again this uh, external sources will be further divided in three categories like publisher data and then standard source of marketing and then internet so these are some of the examples of this external source of the data so if i'm going to take the published data so the published data will be in the form of the electronic mode or maybe in the form of printed mode so if i'm going to be considered the electronic mode all the time so since this one is going to be followed by many government institutions and then um, trade associations and periodicals and newspapers books and then annual reports and then uh, private students 
So all the time the data will be uh, in the form of electronic modes and some of the very rare uh, organization are able to transfer printed mode. And similarly, some of the external sources will be internet. So, and then standard source of marketing. So, if I'm going to be considered the standard source of marketing, so the, uh, the information will be in the store audits where I can able to extract and then warehouse withdraw uh, services. Warehouse means there will be a group of databases and then uh, consumer purchase panels and then single source data and then its integration index, star stores, and return panels and multimedia services. So these are the some of the information we can able to get uh, through standard source of marketing for the uh, external sources of the data. Thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.